Hello friends, a very good morning to all of you. Today we are going to discuss about the danger signs, the warning signs of Japanese encephalitis. Those signs and symptoms where patients are required to get hospitalized. I hope you must have seen all of our previously released videos over this topic. So, so far we have released 5 videos. The first one was regarding the transmission of Japanese encephalitis. Second one, clinical features, the manifestations. Third one, prevention through uh, uh, various modes. What are the preventive measures uh, to prevent this Japanese encephalitis? The fourth one over the diagnosis, the fifth one over the treatment of Japanese encephalitis and today we are going to discuss about the danger signs of Japanese encephalitis. So as we all know Japanese encephalitis is a disease caused by Japanese encephalitis virus and this virus the natural reservoir of the virus is uh, those birds, water birds or the pigs which are the amplifying reservoir. So these uh, viruses are found naturally in these organisms only but somehow with the help of the vector culex the mosquitoes somehow if the human beings are uh, bitten by these mosquitoes containing the Japanese encephalitis virus they get the disease and the disease has been divided into four parts the first one is prodrome second is acute phase third one is subacute phase and the fourth is recovery phase acute phase this acute phase is very important and the danger signs they manifest in this acute phase only so what are these signs these signs are very important so listen carefully first point is fever as we all know fever is very important symptom for Japanese encephalitis but high grade fever hyperpyrexia is one of the danger signs Hyperpyrexia means fever of 106 Fahrenheit. If the patient runs with such a high fever, then he needs to get hospitalized. Second point that is seizures. As I discussed earlier also in my previous video that seizures, they can manifest in patients with Japanese encephalitis and there are Varieties of seizures, different different types of seizures are there. It could be generalized seizures, it could be localized seizures, it could be tonic, clonic, absent, myoclonic. So different types of seizures are there. If the patient manifests with these seizures, then again the patient needs to get hospitalized. The third point that is altered sensorium. There is a change in the behavior, patient remains confused, disoriented, they just forget the things very fastly. In those conditions, again the patients are supposed to get admitted in the hospital. And the fourth and the last point, the features of raised intracranial pressure. Headache, severe headache, followed by repeated episodes of vomiting, that also projectile vomiting. So the triad, just remember this triad, fever, headache and vomiting. If this triad is there, just be alert, get alert. This could be a danger sign for Japanese encephalitis. Other features of raised ICPs are also there like paralysis of abducens nerve where the alignment of the eyes it get it gets disbalanced like you have to see this way one eye will see here but another eye will see somewhere else this is very important plus paralysis of the body parts so these are the general features and i think if you go through all these four points the fever seizures altered sensorium and raised ICP. If you pick up all these four points at earliest, I know many lives can be saved. I hope you must have liked this video. So press the like button. 
don't forget to share subscribe my channel because you are going to get lots of regular updates on this channel and finally if you are having any doubt any problem any issues related to this topic or any other topic related to medical field you can just put in the comment box and i'll try to give all the answers on time thank you